starting from Toronto, well, the van attack that took place in 2018, it was uh, uh, pretty horrendous that uh, the, the number of people who were killed by, uh, by Alec Manassian who drove into them and there was a vigil that was held. Well, this happened on April 23rd, 2018 and it was on Young Street, if you recall, it was during the afternoon and essentially the rampage that took place with a rented van uh, where uh, Manassian drove 2.57 uh, kilometers uh, down Young Street just hitting people and well today three dozen victims are going to be able to speak on what they went through that day and this is part of uh, when it comes to sentencing uh, hearing well what happens is um, as uh, Manassian has gone through his uh, criminal trial well before sentencing it's uh, common for the victims to be able to share what they went through in in those uh, in that horrific event and uh, what their story is, what they felt, what actually happened to them physically, the aftermath of the attack and the type of therapy they've had to go through, how it's impacted their life emotionally, physically, psychologically, and uh, this is going to be heard in court today. Well, essentially, uh, the Superior Court Justice Anne Molly found Alec Manassian guilty of 10 counts of first-degree murder and 16 counts of attempted murder, uh, and this was uh, when f for what took place in uh, April 23rd, 2018. Essentially, uh, it was determined that Manassian's state of mind was to commit murder, which is why he was found guilty of first-degree murder. So essentially, uh, the, when the case took place, well, essentially, they're trying to figure out, was it, did you attempt uh, did you have the mental capacity and was that your intention to kill or was it an accident? And, and given that it was found that it was his intention to kill, that's why he was, he's, uh, he's been uh, found guilty of first degree murder. And essentially this is, uh, the, um, this is the decision of the judge. She writes, his attack on these 26 victims that day was an act of reasoning mind, notwithstanding its horrific nature and notwithstanding that he has no remorse for it and no empathy for his victims is the decision that she wrote. And uh, today, uh, well, the, the, the hearing for sentencing was delayed uh, for, to, for this Monday, and I'll tell you why, because this happened four years ago, and Manassian's been in prison for the last four years, and it was delayed because the Superior Court of Canada, the Supreme Court of Canada, uh, was, wi uh, was deciding on another case, and when it comes to sentencing, well, essentially, um, uh, Alexander Bessonet, which is a man who fatally shot six people inside a Quebec City mosque, if you recall, in 2017, well, the Supreme Court of Canada has decided that uh, uh, the, the, the accused who's found guilty, when it comes to sentencing, that uh, a judge can no longer, or a Crown pros Prosecution can no longer ask a judge to give consecutive uh, sentencing of 25 years, which is uh, what the sentencing is for, for mur first degree murder, and, and the eligibility of parole after those 25 years. And that's... Uh, that so so essentially in uh, Manassian's case where ten people were killed, that would have been 250 years before Manassian could uh, seek eligibility for parole, and eligibility is essentially based on you know what they've gone through while in prison and and the type of programming and initiatives they've taken. Well, they would go before a parole uh, board and they would review their eligibility to go for. Well, essentially, in this case, because of the Supreme Court um, decision, now uh, a judge can no longer give consecutive sentences of 25 years before eligibility of parole, but it would be served at the same time. So that's a significant change. Now, if that's fair, that is uh, for you to decide uh, on this legal ruling. And the reason um, Manassian's case took a while to be able to go through the sentencing is because of the decision that was pending on the Supreme Court of Canada. Uh, so essentially what this means is uh, uh, Alec Manassian is going to be able to go for eligibility of parole in 25 years, not 250 years because of the number of charges that he has that he's been found guilty of. And on top of that, that means he's 30 years old now and uh, by 50 years old, he's going to be able to be 
uh, eligible, well, essentially that's up to the parole board to decide whether he is given parole or not, but the eligibility factor is the key difference here. And even though the next three days the, the victims will give their victim impact statement, which was traditionally uh, what the judge decide, decides sentencing on. It, t it takes some consideration to hear what the victims have gone through. So they have their day in court is essentially the reason behind it, to be able to prioritize them and not just make it about the accused. And essentially this is, uh, and it seems based on the Supreme Court decision, uh, the victim impact statements will not have an impact in Manassian's eligibility for parole, the time period, uh, so that goes down to um, that goes down to the 25 years eligibility. Now, I want to go through. Uh, he's been so far in the last four years. He's been held um, uh, at uh, South Detention Center uh, since uh, since that time period. So that means in about 21 years, since he's already served four years, until today's sentencing, he'll he'll, he'll have his eligibility to apply for parole. And during the during the entire trial, he did not testify in Manassian, but the court did hear his voice in recordings where he gave testimony to the police officer when he was being, uh, in, during his interviews, when he was being questioned and doctors. And essentially uh, in those interview tapes that the court heard, he talks about loneliness and Bible reading that fascinated him with mass murders and the hateful incel movement, uh, which uh, made up men who blame women for the feelings of rejection. And so it's a whole nother psychological issue there that, uh, that the court heard. And so that's, that's what we're facing today, even though this uh, takes place at 10 a.m. today uh, in the Toronto Superior Court, but it is um, the situation with the Supreme Court ruling. Uh, we'd love to hear your comments on what you think of the Supreme Court ruling on uh, a, a judge being able, now being limited in terms of uh, uh, how, how many years they can add on based on how many offenses there are for when it comes to first degree murder and eligibility of parole. And in this case, what would have been 250 years, which would mean that Manassian would spend then his entire life in prison without the eligibility of parole, essentially now has the ability to uh, apply for parole after 21 years from now, since he's already served uh, four years.